Welcome to the channel and today we'll be talking about the Quicksilver Audio headphone amp and this was sent out by my buddy Jeremy and I'll be sending it back to him as soon as possible. I'm sure he wants it back and it was an extended demo uh, loan so it's been a quite a fun little amp to compare against some of my other stuff here and, and mostly just kind of sit down and listen dedicated with it and, and not really compare but just it's as, as its own unique individual beast. So diving into that let's talk about the build and kind of aesthetics and roll into sound and what have you in my experience with this amp. So going into the build of this, uh, built like a tank, it's all metal design, uh, solid, solidly put together. The All the parts are really nice and, and quality, it feels quality in the hand, it's a very heavy amp and not that heavy equates to a better, <laughs> better build, but it is a nicely built amp. And then going into the aesthetics of this, the aesthetics I think might be hit or miss for some. I'm calling it kind of this industrial DIY look where it has a very clean, nice faceplate and like the toggles and the, the volume pot and everything and, and knob are really nicely done. But then right beyond that is like the actual amp and that is where it kind of goes into more of like this industrial slash DIY look with like the uh, capacitors and what have you looking the open to the air and open to be seen and, and you know what's there basically, right? Kind of reminds me of a little bit of like a more polished uh, bottle head crack look. Going into the use case or uh, ease of use of this amp, the volume pot is smooth and excellent and very well done and if you go look on the back side of it you can actually just see the volume pot like the volume is actually just the component is just open and you can see it you can see the it's right beyond the plate here um so that's kind of unique uh the toggle switch is excellent nice and clicky yeah it does its job um and the basically everything works it's very plug and play and it just you just it's very simple and just go. You just kind of plug everything in and you just go. And then as far as, like I said, the volume pot would be the most interaction you're going to have besides turning it on and off, and it just works. There is a little LED indicator here, which is uh, kind of like this interesting indigo blue almost, and that's just to let you know that the power's on. And then obviously the, the tubes light up, and that's actually one of the things to talk about is the tubes themselves, they're, they're very open. Like it's a very, like I said, that DIY build kind of deal. And so... If you have like a children or like a cat that likes to jump on your table, just be aware of that because there's nothing protecting you from touching the, the, the tubes and kind of potentially getting burned or, or a kid getting burned or a cat gun or <laughs> smacking it around maybe, I don't know. So just be aware of that factor. And then diving into kind of the overall sound signature that I had with this and where that I felt it had a similarity to was to me this thing... The Quicksilver audio headphone amp, not thing. It has a very nice uh, sound signature. And it, rem it reminds me of a, a kind of like the step up from like the the tuba amp. Um, that thing is one of my favorite entry level tube amps. Is that the tuba amp, uh, the Hagerman tuba amp, and. This feels like kind of like that next step up from that, like a, like a pretty significant step because there's some amps that kind of fall in between that, I believe. It, it, but I mean, for me, like this one is a big, kind of more in line with that tuba tuba amp sound. Uh, I would say it's a little bit cleaner though, uh, as far as like the, the signature. So it has like kind of a clean tube signature, if that makes sense. Kind of reminds me more of like say the ZMF, or sorry, Amps and Sound uh, pendant. And so, that was a very neutral, clean sounding tube amp. This kind of has a similar kind of signature to it. And then I do feel like my ECP T4, it, it step, it's a step way step above this. Like it's, it's definitely priced appropriately in comparison to, to this one. Um, and it has a little bit more of that tubey uniqueness or uniqueness, tubey gooeyness, I guess, but not quite like overly done like a bottle head or what have you, but it's more in, in controlled. And this just kind of has even more uh, clean tube sound than than even the ECP T4, but whereas the ECP T4, ECP T4, say that ten times fast, it has a little bit more detail and imaging, and it's a little bit seems like a little bit wider. It amplifies the headphones that have wider stage. It kind of kind of pushes even further with that. And that's the thing with like amps is like they're there to accentuate and power your headphones, which the headphones should be giving you most of your uh, stage imaging, like your highs, your mids, that kind of thing, lows. And, and so I'm not going to go too hard into the, the sound signature as far as like um, highs, mids, and lows because it's, you know, the headphones are going to color that more than the, the amp will, in my opinion. Um, 
and the amp mostly just accentuates those features of the headphone that you're utilizing. So the headphones that I was using mostly with this for, for my time has been the ZMF Atriums, and these are my lovely pair, which is purple and delicious. <laughs> Anyhow, so I was using the Atriums, and I also was utilizing, because it was... I got these in from Zach and I'll be doing a video on these here in the near future but the ZMF Caldera which is his new Planar Magnetic and whew, yeah look yeah I'm this this is awesome um both fantastic headphones ZMF Z, uh, I'm a fan everyone if you're new to the channel <laughs> wear it on my sleeve ZMF is kind of my jam they they just fit my preferences almost wholly and completely so as far as like my what I like to hear when I'm listening to music. So back to the Quicksilver Audio headphone amp, when paired with my ZMFs here, it felt like, and the HMs can be a little bit more on the mid and high focus, and the Caldera is a more neutral, a kind of more even keel, but to me, the Quicksilver headphone amp is, it, it feels like it's more in line pushing more in the mids and highs, and the lows, while being nice and punchy and, and have a nice, decent warmth to them, when you think of a tube amp, you think of that warm, punchy uh, gooeyness almost within the low end and that warmth, right? Where this, it has more of that punchiness and clean, but it doesn't have as much uh, warmth to it. Uh, where the mids become, mids and highs have more of an emphasis, or they emphasize it more with the headphones that I was using, and it has a little bit more, um, like sheen to it or, or sparkle and it it wasn't bright it wasn't uh piercing in any way shape or form but it was it just had that more accentuated mids and highs to my ear while still having a really decent punchiness to the low end and it was it's a very very enjoyable amp to listen to so like take that into account at least that was my experience with this amp so kind of diving back into like who is this for i would say that this is on the list for me if I didn't have the ECPT4, this would probably be very high on my list of amps I'd want to have with my setups. Uh, even though I do prefer a little bit more warmth and I do like a little more tubiness, this is, for the price, it's, it sits really nicely in that kind of uh, $1,000 range headphone amp, uh, especially the tube amps. It's a very nice and honestly <laughs> hard to beat amp in that price range. It's just fantastic. I think as a kind of, I guess I, I don't want to say mid-tier, but I guess mid-tier <laughs> amplifier, it's excellent. And I would easily and can easily recommend it if you're in the market for something like that. If it's a little bit too pricey, I would say that the Hagerman Tuba is like kind of a, a nice alternative and it has a similar but not quite the same uh, sound signature. And that's something to be taken into account. Like I'm, when I say something has a similar sound signature or they have a, like they're in the same family kind of deal, they might have a similar sound signature, but they're all wholly unique individual amps, and they all have their unique uh, capabilities and signatures inside of that range of my thoughts on those things. So take that into account. Final thoughts. Uh, fantastic amp, and I think easily recommendable. Uh, I didn't find any major flaws. In fact, the only real flaw I could think of is that aesthetics one where it's, you know, hit or miss for some people for that look of that industrial DIY that I was kind of coining there. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really, really fantastic amp, and I have had a lovely time with it. And I did a couple of tube rolls, but mostly stuck with the um, Genelec Lions, I think is what I mainly stuck with. And then I think it was the... Uh, yeah, JJ's uh, in the back. So the mostly stock with uh, the Genelex being the only thing I really swapped into and, and just sounded quite lovely. So that was my experience with the Quicksilver Audio headphone amp. So uh, thank you for stopping by and chatting with me and we'll catch everybody on the next one. All right, cheers.